Hello everyone, how are you all? I am Dr. Nandita and today I am here to solve some problems based on the concepts that you have learned in the chapter of organic chemistry hydrocarbons. But before I start, let me just talk a little bit about hydrocarbons and their usefulness in our daily life. So basically from the name you can easily understand that hydrocarbons are the compounds made up of carbon and hydrogen. So how they are used in our daily life? They are very important in our life. So you may have heard about liquid petroleum gas that we are LPG that we are using for our cooking purpose and also you have heard about kerosene oil. This, is, this LPG and kerosene both of them are used as domestic fuels. So they are hydrocarbons, right? Also in automobiles, petrol, diesel, CNG that is compressed natural gases, they are used in automobiles. They are also made up of hydrocarbons and these are these fuels are producing so much of energy. So whenever you are running a car or any vehicle, you need the understanding of hydrocarbons. So you can easily understand the importance of hydrocarbons. Also hydrocarbons can be used, higher hydrocarbons basically can be used as solvents in paints and hydrocarbons can also be used for manufacturing of polymers such as polyethylene, propylene, um, also um, polystyrene and so on. Hydrocarbons can also be used as the starting material for manufacturing of drugs and dyes. So whatever examples I have given so far from that you can easily get hydrocarbons are very very useful in our day to day life. So with that let's start to solve the problem. So this problem that is problem 1 appeared in joint entrance advanced examination 2022. The problem is if the reaction sequence given below is carried out with 15 moles of acetylene, the amount of the product D formed in gram is. So we have to calculate the amount of product D formed in this reaction in gram. So the reaction is given like this and we have to actually find out the products A, B, C and D. So let's start to get the products that is A, B, C and D. So, so 3 moles of acetylene is undergoing reaction in presence of iron tube in red hot condition right to give you the product A. So you can get from here this product which is nothing but benzene. So this is our A which is formed 80 percent. So from acetylene 80 percent of A is formed that is benzene is formed and now if you apply CH3, CH2, CH2, Cl in presence of aluminium chloride you will get product B which is this one, this is our product B which is formed 50 percent. Now if you apply first O2, second H3O plus and third if you remove C is 3, C O C is 3 from this product B, you will get the C as your phenol. 
this is our C which is also formed 50 percent during this reaction. Now the final one that we have to get the product D right. So what is the treatment? It is treated with CH3COCl and PDD. So you will get the product D O C O CH3. So this is our D which is formed 100 percent. Now so we have got A, B, C and D from the given conditions right. Now we have we, what can we write we can write that 3 moles of acetylene is equal to it is giving 1 mole of A is equal to 1 mole of A times 80 percent that is 0 0.8 mole of A. So we are talking about 15 moles of acetylene. So 15 moles of acetylene is equal to 0 0.8 times 15 moles of A or 4 moles of A. Right. So, what can we write that? From here we can write that 1 mole of A gives 1 mole of B, right? 1 mole of A gives 1 mole of B times how many percent? 50 percent. So, 50 percent or 0 0.5 mole of B and we are talking about 4 moles that we have already calculated. So, 4 moles of A gives 0 0.5 times 4 equal to 2 moles of B right. Now from here you can see that 1 mole of B can give 1 mole of C. So times 50 percent. So we can write 1 mole of B gives 1 mole of C times 50 percent that is 0 0.5 moles or mole of C. So, we are talking about 2 moles of B. So, 2 moles of B gives 0 0.5 times 2 that is 1 mole of C. So, because we are running out of space here, so rest of the part we will do here. right? So, we have already calculated that 2 moles of B gives 1 mole of C. right? And from this part that is from C to D, you can easily write that 1 mole of C gives 1 mole of D. It is formed 100 percent. Right. So, now we are already sure that 1 mole of D is formed during this reaction. Right. So, what we have to now find out that from the structural point of view you can easily say that the molecular structure of D is 
is equal to C8H8O2. From here, what we have got, you can easily find out. Now, what can we do? We have to find out the molar mass. We have already find out, found out the uh, how many moles is formed. That is, one mole is formed. One mole of D is formed. We know the molecular structure of D. So, from there we can easily calculate the molar mass of D. So, let me just box it out. Right. So, we have 12. The atomic mass of carbon is 12. We have 8 carbon atoms here plus atomic mass of 1 hydrogen is 1. We have 8 hydrogen here and atomic mass of oxygen is 16, we have 2 oxygen atoms here. So, 96 plus 8 plus 32, if you calculate, you will come out as 136 gram per mole. So, we have number of moles and we have the molar mass of D. So, from there, you can easily get the mass of D. So, mass of D is nothing but the number of moles that is 1 mole times the molar mass of D which has come out as 136 gram per mole. This mole would cancel out and we end up with 136 gram. So, this is what we are asked to calculate in this problem that the amount of the product D which is formed in this reaction in gram. So, 136 gram of D has been produced during this reaction, right. Very simple, I hope you have understood. So, with that let us move on to the problem 2. So, here problem 2 is asking to identify the products A and B from the following reaction. So, what is the reaction? The reaction is here. So, CH3 in presence of diluted KMnO4 at 273 Kelvin. This is our 1 methyl cyclopentene right now in presence of dilute KMnO4 in at 273 Kelvin what will happen in the first step the reaction will proceed through two steps in the first step what will happen MnO4, KMnO4 will react with this 1 methyl cyclopentene in order to form aldehydes and ketone. So, let us see how it will do that. So, it will attack here and this will come in this way and so what we will form here is that is the following. So, so this will form. Now, this will give you the aldehyde and the structure of the aldehyde is such that now if you this aldehyde is formed now if you check this one this is the name of this compound which is this aldehyde compound is 
फाइव ऑक्सो हेक्सन एल सो इन द फर्स्ट स्टेप दिस एल डी हाइड इज फॉर्म नाउ इफ यू चेक द स्ट्रक्चर यू विल सी दैट दिस इज नथिंग बट सी एच थ्री सी ओ सी एच टू सी एच टू सी एच टू एंड सी एच राइट नाउ इफ यू लुक हेयर आई एम जस्ट पॉइंटिंग आउट हेयर this one so there is a mistake it should be d right this is option d not c so now if you check you can see that oh god so yeah we are back now uh, if you check here you can see that this is nothing but this one right this one so this is the aldehyde which has been formed in this reaction in the primary state now let's do the second step so this is our a product a we are to identify the product a and b in this reaction now this is product a which has already formed now this product a is treated with cro3 and here what will happen over oxidation will happen right and the result of the over oxidation will be such that it will form this acid and the name of this acid is 5 oxo hexanoic acid and now if you write it in this manner you will end up with ch3 co ch2 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 c o o h this is 5 oxo hexanoic acid and this is nothing but what has been given here as b right so this is the product b of this reaction so we have already identified the product a as 5 oxo hexanoic and the product b as 5 oxo hexanoic acid which is given in the option d so we have already identified a and b and from the options which are given we can say that option d is the correct option simple you just only identify you just only have to identify the reaction and the reaction mechanism so simple now let's move on to the problem number 3 problem 3 is asking to predict the major product of the following addition reaction this problem appeared in joint and trans main examination 2019 and now let's see how can we solve this problem so here alkene is given that is ch3 ch double bond ch2 and it is treated with chlorine and water so the function of water in this reaction is as a solvent right so now the product of this reaction would be CH3, CH, OH. I'm sorry. CH2, Cl, or plus. This is called a halohydrin. so halohydrin is an organic compound which contains both hydroxyl group and any halogen group so because chlorine is used here as halogen we can easily say this compound as chlorohydrin 
right another product is formed and this would be formed as major product this chlorohydrin major product another two compounds are formed during this reaction which are ch3 chcl ch2cl plus hbr these are basically the second one is formed as minor product of this reaction now we will see the mechanism of the reaction how this is the major product is formed during this reaction let's start so the mechanism of this reaction would be as follows so ch3 ch double bond ch2 is reacting with chlorine and this double bond will heat here and this will break and the result of this step is ch3 ch ch2 cl plus this is called chloronium ion this is formed and what else will be formed cl minus right right now it will be treated with water so what water will do this will heat here and this bond will break this will result ch3 result in ch3 ch we can write here because oxygen is losing the lone pair the electrons so it will get a plus sign here and we will write it like this and ch2 cl now if another water molecule we will use it will heat here and this will go here so this is giving you ch3 ch oh ch2 cl so this is the chlorohydrin that is formed as major product that we have already discussed above so what else will be formed here hydronium ion is 3o plus so we can say that the major product of this reaction is of this addition reaction is ch3choh ch2cl now if you check the option you can see that option b is the correct option very simple i hope you have understood now with this let's move on to the final problem of the session so problem 4 is asking which of the following compounds is not aromatic so four compounds are given cyclic compounds are given we have to find out which one is not aromatic now if you one by one move, uh, check the option a option c and option d you can see that all of them contains 4n plus 2 pi electron all of them belongs to so we can write a c and d compounds a c and d if you check all of them belong to 4n plus 2 pi electron system and in this case n is equal to 1 so they have 
pi electrons right compounds a c and d right so according to huckel's law of aromaticity we know that any planar and cyclic compound planar as well as cyclic compound are said to be aromatic or is said to be aromatic if it contains 6 pi electrons so with this idea from huckel's or huckel's law we can say that a c and d compounds are aromatic according to Huckel's law. Huckel's law of aromaticity. But if you check the option B, that is this one, this is our cyclopenta dienyl cation cyclopenta dienyl cation this can show the following resonating structures So, it can exist as the following resonance hybrid. This cyclopenta dienyl cation can exist as the resonance hybrid. So, due to this fact, it contains the cyclopenta dienyl cation it contains 4 pi conjugated electrons right here your and it follows the 4 n pi electron system where n is equal to 1 and as i have mentioned about huckel's law it is violating the Huckel's law of aromaticity because Huckel's law tells that, tell that any planar and cyclic compound which contains 4n plus 2 pi electron system is aromatic because it is having 4 pi electrons conjugated electrons it is violating Huckel's law of aromaticity that is why it is anti aromatic right. So, option B is anti aromatic while I have mentioned that other three given compounds are aromatic. So, this is anti aromatic option B and that is what we are asked to calculate in this problem that which of the following compounds is not aromatic. So, this one that is option B that is cyclopenta dienyl cation is anti aromatic or non aromatic. So, option B is the correct option for this problem. So, with this I would like to end this live session. I hope you have really enjoyed this session. So, thank you for your kind attention and people who are not watching live now you can go to Abdemi checklist to see the uploaded videos. So, get connected and get registered with Abdemi. Thank you very much. See you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.